Gulf Breeze, Florida, a vacation destination for many, but not for Deshaun Butler. Get tall, get tall. Butler is at the Andrews Institute Athletes Performance Center. Last rep right here. Hoping to ensure his NBA dream is still realized. Can you put into words how much stress this injury has caused you emotionally? <laughs> a lot. You know, I think a majority of me was just thinking about where I'll be in the future because of this. Butler was projected to be picked in the first round of this year's NBA draft. He banks inbounds it to Butler. Butler into the lane, into traffic. It goes again for Butler. A second team All-American, Butler led West Virginia to a Big East tournament title and to their first Final Four appearance in 51 years. But at the Final Four, everything changed. Here's Deshaun driving hard, left to the basket, gets knocked down, offensive foul, Deshaun Butler, his fourth, and Deshaun is injured, a left leg injury. Deshaun Butler is down on his back in the lane, he is writhing in pain. The only thing I was thinking about is like coming back and playing, and I had a feeling I wouldn't be able to come back and play after a while. The image of Coach Bob Huggins comforting Butler is one of the most memorable scenes from the 2010 Final Four. He's trying to console Deshaun Butler, he was just in a tremendous amount of pain. I kind of looked at him, I was like, I'm sorry, because I wanted to get him his national championship. And he's like, don't say sorry. And he just like grabbed me by the back of my head. He's like, don't apologize. You've been great. You've done nothing but help this team. You've been a great leader and, you know, other things. And, you know, just calmed me down. A torn ACL, a sprained MCL, and two deep bone bruises had ravaged Butler's left knee and clouded his NBA future. My position I've always taken with Deshaun since he was a little kid is whatever went wrong, I fixed it. This is the one thing I could not fix. Five days after the injury, Butler arrives at the Andrews Institute to undergo surgery. This happened at the last game of my season, you know. It kind of scared me and just worried about, you know, how I bounce back from it and, you know, what kind of career I'll have afterwards. You good? Yep, okay. I'm right. After the two-hour surgical procedure, there is good news. Surgery went great. There were no surprises. Uh, knee is very healthy. We're really optimistic. And uh, surgery went super well. Following the surgery, the Butler's seven, knee is badly swollen and he's in obvious discomfort. Pain, torture. The night before I woke up, I was like, Christ. I'm about to just lay it down right now because that pain was ridiculous. I was just thinking about taking up coaching. <laughs> Honestly, I was just sitting there. I'm like, I might as well just coach because I don't see how this is happening. With six months of intense rehab in front of him, Butler and his girlfriend, Natalie Aliff, leave Florida to return to Morgantown, West Virginia. Bye, Florida. One treatment, we always start getting divots. So yeah. We're going the right direction. Yes, we are. Back in West Virginia, six days after surgery, the university's training coordinator uses electric and ice stimulation to help reduce the swelling and numb the pain. Butler undergoes a series of exercises that increases flexibility, strength, and movement in his knee. He now hobbles across campus with a knee brace and crutches. Since I hurt myself, I've probably had like one part of the day where I'm like, goodness, man, like, I should have just shot a jump shot. <laughs> Butler has found a way to keep working on his shot, even though he's not jumping. In Morgantown, Butler is an A-list celebrity. I am signing a rock. This is my first rock ever. And a 6'7 forward from Newark, New Jersey, number one, Dave Sean Butler. At his team banquet less than one month after surgery, Butler walks without crutches, an important milestone in his recovery. Let everybody know, obviously, one, I was fine for me mentally, you know, just to do it. And just for my teammates, you know, just let them know, like, nothing to worry about, I'm all right. Butler's knee is gaining mobility and strength. I feel like a human being. But at night, as he watches the NBA playoffs, he ponders his future. Just watching this and... Praying I'll be there next year. Butler is now lifting weights. Water resistance therapy is also part of his daily routine, with all his focus looking ahead to the draft. That'd be cool to go second round. Now I think about it. 
granted, it's guaranteed money in the first, but still. If I get in, I won't get out. After his morning rehab session, Butler meets with his agent, Richard Katz. A lot of teams are saying that um, they've still got you as a second round pick. Okay. It's just a matter of me just convincing somebody that I'm good for a job, anybody, and whoever didn't, then, you know, no hard feelings and we'll move on from there. Just prove everybody wrong. In a sea of college graduates, Deshaun Butler stands out, not just to his peers, but to President Bill Clinton, who gives the commencement address. Well, I've already had two big thrills today. I got a degree. And before the service, I got to talk with Deshaun Butler. Uh. With his parents in attendance, Butler receives his Bachelor of Arts degree in multidisciplinary studies. Deshaun Christopher Butler. Chicago, Illinois, site of the MBA draft evaluation camp. Butler and his agent arrive a day early to prepare for interviews they've set up with several MBA teams. One of the first questions I think probably most of them will, will ask you is, how, how's the knee? The knee is great, man. There's no problems with the knee. Rehab's going great. It's getting better and better every day. Okay, that's good. What was your grade point average? Three, three. Whew, man, you gotta get that in. Somewhere you gotta get that in. A few hours before the interviews, Butler and his agent are in the hotel lobby an opportunity for NBA executives to see him walking without a limp. Getting healthy and everything. It's kind of awkward watching everybody just licking my leg when they saw me. You know, it's like they're like checking my leg out, like looking sideways, and I'm like getting ready to shake the hand. I'm like, hey, how you doing? That's why I hate dressing up, because tight necks. I've been doing the shrugs. Clearly a little nervous. Butler leaves for the first of several interviews. Three hours and four interviews later, a much more relaxed Butler returns to his hotel room, saying everything went great except when he was asked to tell one team something they didn't know about him. And I had to tell him that I, I'm afraid of pigeons and squirrels, so that wasn't really fun, <laughs> and they laughed in my face. Before his next set of interviews, Butler relaxes by watching a video of his highlights. I don't think I'm going to miss. Then one final wardrobe decision. Have a little bit of yellow in there, should I, should I? Or do I wait for a team that wears like a little red action going on, you know, with the, the Cavs, just like this, the Bulls or somebody, what do I do? You know, decisions. East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast, East Coast. West Coast. Minutes after his final interview, Butler reflects on the day. Making a good impression on people, letting them know who I am, what I'm about, my morals, and a little bit about my background, and what they can look forward to in the next 14 years. Go. Deshaun Butler is returned to Florida to continue rehab on his knee. At the Andrews Institute, he undergoes an intense six hours every day. He is now jumping, as well as running on a treadmill in the water. Butler's physical therapist says he's on schedule to be ready to participate in full basketball drills by October. I always sit there and I think to myself, you know, this would be a cool story someday if I actually do something worth doing in the NBA. And I want to get to that point someday where I'm just this great NBA player. I always keep it in the back of my head, just take it serious now because sooner or later, you know, I'll have all my dreams come true.